I want to show you a, a watercolor technique that I think is really quite neat and not necessarily something you might discover unless you've been painting for quite a while. And watercolor artists talk a lot about painting wet and wet or painting wet on dry and, and so forth, but the, the real key to improving your watercolor painting is learning how to, how to use those techniques in small doses across your entire watercolor painting. And, and then to have variations on them or to combine them to create interest in your painting. So we'll talk about that in, in a moment. And I just wanted to share this technique and it's just using very moist paper or paint on dry paper. And that's how I usually prefer to paint because from there you can add water and blend things out or you can just let it dry and keep that nice crisp line. So I'm doing a little line of trees and we'll say this is a landscape painting. And a lot of times what I would do here is this is just a solid green color. So maybe I want to have a little bit of shadow at the base of that green. So I might grab another color, very dark, in this case it's Payne's Gray. And I'm just touching it to the edge of my, my tree line here so that the base of the trees would seem to be in shadow. And then of course there's going to be shadows within the trees because these are a group of trees. There's lots of different ones so maybe I'll drop in some Payne's Gray here and there. And then maybe I want to make it even a little more interesting than that. So I might grab some violet to create my sh make my shadows a little more interesting. And I can use clean wa clear water to refine the edges of my trees here in my bushes. And I just used clear water to change the shape of this and because it's so wet, it's not going to dry immediately. And so you can continue to work with it as long as it's got that shiny wetness. There's a lot you can do to just keep adding color. So that's very interesting. But we'll zoom in a little bit more so you can see it. So I've got lots of colors in that one little shape. The real magic happens if I sit here and I let this dry a little bit and I'm going to kind of wait for it to lose some of its shiny moistness and then I can work with this shape some more. And I wouldn't have to, I mean I like the color that I have, but I want to create some variety. I've got this dark shadow edge, I've got this green, but it's it, even though I've got these different colors dropped in, there's still kind of a sameness about it and I can add even a little bit more variety just by using a watercolor technique that I had kind of abandoned for a while. And I'm holding a piece of tissue here, and or paper towel works as well. And I used to always work with a piece of paper towel in my hand because then I could quickly blot up mistakes that I made. And the problem with that was, you know, I, I was kind of a nervous painter. I would paint a shape and I wasn't completely happy with it so I would quickly blot it so that I could do it over again. And as time has passed I've become a more confident painter so I find that I'm not using my paper towel or my tissue to blot my mistakes anymore. Uh, I should mention too that you can always fix mistakes with your paintbrush or blot up mistakes. Uh, let's say I had painted that shape here again that I didn't like. You can clean your brush, soak up any water, and then use your brush as a sponge to lift color. And the nice thing about that is you get a little more precision. You could just lift color from one area and then blot it out. So you get a little more precision than you do with just a paper towel where you're blotting up the whole shape. Now as my trees are drying, the color is starting to set into the page. And of course once it's dry it becomes a lot more difficult to blot and lift mistakes depending on the staining qualities of your paint. But what I really thought was neat was I was recently building a landscape and I was use, doing a tree line basically just like this. And then all of a sudden I noticed, and, and this happens with watercolor paint all the time, that along the edge of your paint, and I'm going to try and demonstrate it here with another color. What happens is every time you lay a light, nice wet pigment onto your page like this, 
we have a crisp edge because of the dryness of the paper around it. And so what happens is the color will go to the border where wet meets dry and it will stop and go no further. And where it touches that edge often will turn out to be just a slight bit darker than what's in the center. Because that color wants to move and wants to move out beyond that border, it migrates over there even though it never does pass that border of wet with dry. So I'm getting then when this is dry, the very subtlest, uh, let me see here if I can show you here, uh, the very subtlest edge right in here you can see it's slightly darker than what's in the center. And the, we can take advantage of that quality. And this is what was getting me all excited, was I can take advantage of that quality in my trees here that I've made. And it's starting to dry, it's still a little shiny, but already this edge is just the faintest um, value step darker than the center of my image. And if I were to blot or lift with my brush, I'm going to maximize that and, and compare and con or I'm just gonna enhance that difference just that little bit further. I'm lightening the color in the center and suddenly my edges seem just that much darker. And it's adding this new dimension of contrast in my shapes. And so I want you to see that this is a technique you can use. Blotting and lifting doesn't have to be just for fixing mistakes. Uh, I'm just going to go in close again. And hoping you can see, especially right in here, you can see how dark this edge is and then it's lighter in, in the center. And as I lift and blot, and then, and I want to do this from a stage where things aren't quite dry. I'm just creating even more contrast between the edge and the center of the shape. And I just think it adds something new and fresh that you don't always get just with one pass and then leaving it alone to dry. So sometimes when you're painting, you want to stick close while it's drying. Don't just walk away and let it leave it be. We can get these interesting transitions by letting our painting dry, or by blotting as our painting dries. And I cover many other watercolor landscape techniques in my new online course, Landscapes in Watercolor, and you can check it out on my website. And I encourage you to do so. I, I share a lot of content that I don't make available on my YouTube videos. I'm really just scratching the surface here on YouTube and there's so much more you can learn.